Daniel made over $50,000 with a winning product that will be revealed in this video. We will number one, show you his product. Number two, give you a live filming session. And number three, break down the entire strategy that you used to make over $50,000 with the Shopify dropshipping business. My name is Daniel and I made 54,000 New Zealand dollars in under two months with this product right here. I'm going to be showing you guys how I found the product, how I come up with my video ideas, and how I still go viral to this day. And I'm going to be doing a live filming session, and I'm going to be doing live editing to show you guys exactly the process of how I do it all. So let's get into it. So basically how I found this product was I was scrolling on my TikTok burner and I saw the product on my TikTok burner. I saw this one guy, he had gone one video pretty viral, like 30 million views. The video was like five days old, that went viral. So I saw it was pretty early and I just put it on the product research list, right? I booked a one-on-one -on -one call with one of the mentors, Tobias. He basically said, yeah, this product's good. Funny enough, that was the only product he ticked off on that one-on-one -on -one call because all the other products up on the list were trash. I ordered this product to my house and started making content with it. The content at the beginning with this product, I was just copying the competitor, getting a feel for the product and just getting used to filming with it. None of my videos that I copied went viral. It was only till I added my own hand movements and my own sounds to the video, a bit more original. And that's when it started to really go viral. So I ended up finding my own proven concept with this product, a winning sound for the videos and a winning hand movement for the videos. And it always goes viral. I've had like over 10 videos for this product with the sound and these hand movements go viral with this product. I also used a relevant holiday at the time to go viral with this product. Since it was Mother's Day was coming up when I was running this product, all the videos I did at the beginning were targeted towards mums. In my opinion, I think that pushed the video out to more people and let's get into the live filming. It is acupressure labeled socks. So these are just regular socks. They've got acupressure points, like the nerve points that are on your feet and they're all labeled on the sock. Problem solving product, I guess. If you believe in this stuff, it helps people with foot pain, like chest pain or whatever. These are the massage tools that um, you massage your, your feet with. Uh, this product has got a certain vibe to it. It's sort of like a holistic yoga, nice sort of like vibe. So you want an environment that replicates that vibe. So you wouldn't want to be in like an office for this uh, type of product. You want to be in a nice, a nice place with a nice view. Fortunately for me, I live in a beautiful town. So I've got a beautiful view and it really worked together with this product and um, helped it go viral. So I have two props for this video. I have a yoga, a yoga roller, whatever you call it, and a yoga mat. So I'm gonna get my props ready to film this video. So now we've got all the props ready. That's basically it for the props. You've just got a yoga mat and the roller to simulate that sort of uh, vibe for the product that you want. So like I said to you guys, I've already got a viral video concept for this product and it works like almost every time. I went viral on Instagram for this product and if you guys don't know with Instagram, you can, it's like crazy. You can just re-upload like the same concept over and over again and I'll just go viral. With uh, TikTok, you can't actually do that. You have to be more original. It's lucky for me that I'm viral on Instagram for this product because I can just replicate the same video concepts and continue to go viral. So the filming equipment I use for this product, just the chest mount. So for this product, I want to show it in, a, in the natural light. So I'm gonna, the sun's coming from that way, so I'm just gonna go down here and it'll make the video just look a lot better. So basically the hand movements I use, I got two of them. I'll show you guys both of them in this. Here's the first one. So I basically click record and I go like this, bring that one in, bring this one in, flip it. And uh, yeah, I'll just do this multiple times. I'll go back when I'm editing and find the best one. To showcase the socks, all I do is just this. And again, I'm just gonna do it over and over again so I can just get the best one when I'm editing. And that's it for the hook. That's the hook we filmed in literally under a minute. So it's super easy for this product, which is great. So here's the second hook I use, the second hand movement that goes viral as well. So this hand movement has gotten me over 35 million views, I think. But it's basically, you just bring it in like that, bring it in like that, spin it, and like that. And it matches with the sound. This is also important. This, these hand movements don't work with every sound I use. They only work when it's, cause they match the beat with the sound I use. And um, it just works together to make a entertaining, well put together, I guess, satisfying type of video. But I'm gonna film this one now. I'm gonna film over and over again. 
do the best one. So now we got the hooks done for both the videos. We're gonna do the foot transition when we put the sock on, and then we're gonna obviously massage our feet with these massage tools. So for this part, I don't use the chest mount, so I can just take this off. But um, I'll just put these in like the background so the viewer can see them. And then basically, I just get one of the socks. I'll usually do my right foot because it's just easiest for me. But I get one of the socks and then just go like this. And it's in the natural light as well. The lighting here is uh, nice and you want to have it centered on your foot. And then basically, you just throw it on your foot and then we'll edit the transition later. Put the sock on. And then basically we just continue with the transition. Cool, that's done. So now we're gonna do the massaging of the video. The, the massaging of the foot. So for this one, I come around with natural lighting and just make it look better. Uh, so I turn around a bit. You don't really need the, the yoga mat for this one because it's a more close up. Basically, I just do the same. I already know what ones, I've split tested so many videos, so I know what uh, ones, I guess, go the most viral when I massage certain ones in a certain order and it just works with the beat of the music and um, it just goes viral. You guys will see when I'm editing what I mean, but um, yeah, I'm gonna film this now. And for this one, a little bit of a controversial product because it's got some like weird things on the sock. Like it says rectum anus. You are good, I'm gonna read it from there, but it says it. I'll just uh, do add that to some of my videos if I wanna like boost the engagement because people comment on it like, hey yo, like what is he massaging? So that's one video done. Now we're just gonna film with the, the green massage tools because you wanna give the viewer some different things to different stimulation. You don't wanna be showing them the same video every time, but if you mix things up a bit, get a different like color variant to your product, it's always a good thing. And since I filmed that hook with the, uh, the first hook with the green one, I'll need to do that to finish that video. So I'm just gonna go through the same thing again, uh, basically the exact same. Since I know what I'm doing now, it literally is so quick for me. You can film a video for these these products in like five minutes. All right guys, that's it for this product. All the filming done is literally super simple. So um, let's get into the editing now. Okay, we're on CapCut and uh, we're gonna do the editing now. So I have the viral sound saved on here. So this is the first viral sound. I'm sure you guys have all probably heard that before. It was super trending at the time, went viral with it. So um, it worked out pretty well. Basically, we're just gonna sync it to the video and uh, the hand movement. So we're gonna sync it all up together and make it look good. Yeah, let's do that now. All right guys, so here's the finished product. Honestly, uh, I'm not too happy with the clips. I think the clips could have been better, but um, this is what, we, what we're working with. It really syncs up with the sound and uh, makes it work all together. So I used the caption, I got these for my mum's foot pain because for some reason the mum captions just work pretty well. Let's do the next one. So this is the second sound that went viral, the viral sound. Anyway, I'm gonna do a video using this sound and the second hand movements we did. So here's the next one. I use the caption, first thing I do when frustrated, because I haven't used this one before. The one that we in viral before was first thing I do when stressed. So I'm just trying something new out to see if it will um, go any more viral. That's what we're working with. Um, let's get posting these. Okay, so now I'm on my US phone and I'm gonna post them, just one of them. And just like that, we made a video in like 10 minutes. But yeah, then let's get into your story. It's been a while since you're, you're doing dropshipping. How did everything go? I just kept on running the socks and then I also stopped doing videos for the, the toy guns mm -hmm. as well, but they still kept on bringing in um, some sales uh, daily but like nothing crazy. But um, yeah, I've still been going viral to like this day with the socks, but they have like the conversion rate has dropped a bit, but it's pretty crazy with Instagram. Like you can just repost the same videos and they just go viral again and again and again. For you, how long did it take to you actually started seeing like results and numbers? From when I started dropshipping. 
Yeah. I uh, started in June, like literally a year ago, like this week was like a year ago. I was setting up my first store. Uh, so it was like a year from now and then it took me like six months to get my first big winner, but I had like small winners, like a thousand revenue, like 500 revenue, not really winners, but just a little bit of money in between that. But then I had the first winner, which was the fidget guns. And then that kind of kicked it off for me. And like roundabout, when do we started working together? Yeah. So I used the money from the fidget guns, my first bit of money from that. And I just used it all on the course which mm -hmm. was in uh, right, February the 15th. I don't remember February the, the 15th? Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. And like, what was the main things which, which changed since then? Well, the product research was definitely the biggest like help I got because I was putting so many like trash products on my product research sheet mm -hmm. and like scarcely any of them were getting tested through. Like I probably would have wasted like months testing products that I just, that were just trash. Mm -hmm. Like that I would have tested if you guys didn't tell me like, no, that product's bad. Like I still, even some of my products now that I put on the sheet still are pretty not like that good. I see. I see. So, so the main help was the products and like when we started selecting the products, did you see what's better about them or does it still not really make sense? And you're just like, listen to it. So what, uh, what we tell you? No, I definitely see it. It definitely helps a lot now. Like we went on the one-on-one -on -one call with them and like we went through the product research sheet and you like told me like which one's good, which one's bad and like why it's good, like why it's bad. And it uh, gives you like a good idea of like what products are actually good. My product research is definitely a lot better than it was when I, first join the program like 100 percent. yeah no i can tell for sure let's let's go through the dashboard and also through uh, through the accounts i mean it is super cool that you can like share the the accounts as well so let's go through both well, this is the socks for this mm -hmm. one this is all new zealand dollars just quickly refresh the dashboard so people see it's real yeah. um and this is obviously one of the products and then you have another one which how much did it make roughly you don't have to show this the other one is made fifty thousand new zealand which i'm not sure exactly oh. how much that is yeah, so no, they're like around about 100k in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, okay, so well, first of all, congrats on that. Um, let's go through through the accounts and um, like touch on why this worked so well. I went viral on Instagram for this, this, uh, these socks. Here's the account. But I did go viral on TikTok, but like a couple hundred K views, but nothing um, over a million. But it was a bit weird. So when I was started this, it was Mother's Day was coming up. So mm -hmm. I, um, I marketed it towards like mums. And uh, that's, I think that's what brought in the most, when it brought in the most. Um, I think so, I saw one with 32 million. Here's on the, the spiral one with 44 million. These rows of flames are catching a fire. Ah. So what was good about this? Like, why did it go viral, you think? Well, I think it went viral because I was this like second person to go like super viral with this product. It was, so it was pretty early to it. That was like one of the factors. Mm -hmm. But then the second one was probably just because I think the hand movements as well, like there was a new, like that main dude was doing this other hand movement. And then, so this is kind of like my own thing that I like mixed up into it, just trying new things. I think the way it looks, yeah, it's just a new product. And the product is like also a little bit like weird because it's like it's obviously yeah. the socks and it's like labeled all the points and like some of the labels are weird it's just like i don't know if i showed it in a video but on this video but it's like shows like rectum anus and it's like a bunch of weird stuff on the socks but it's just a weird concept massaging your it says kidney and you're massaging it where it says kidney even though yeah. it's on your foot and it just gets yeah. people commenting did it go viral in the right audience did it convert like really well or were not that crazy it was like 40 percent of all my people that went on my store was like from india mm -hmm. so that, that didn't help a lot but um this one converted like a lot more than the i had a recent one like in the last month that got 30 million views and that didn't convert as well as uh this one i think it's because it was like a, the mother's day thing and a lot of mm -hmm. people got it their moms. have you heard of the new trick we're probably gonna have to blur it out on youtube but have you heard of the new trick how to exclude people from india no i haven't heard of that but basically you just so, oh, or, uh. but yeah, anyways, maybe let's go through one more video. Yeah. So at the same time I had a video here with, so that one got 41 and then 44 mm -hmm. and it was going viral at the same time. So, um, that also, uh, had, that was like the first spike, same video, but just like a little bit different. These roads of flames are catching a fire. Yeah. 
it's it's the same video concept, same sound. That sound, for some reason, that sound just worked like a lot better than most of the other sounds I used because I think it was just like going super viral mm -hmm. at the time. How did it generally feel when you started making these like crazy numbers? Like what's, what went through your, obviously you're six, how old are you? Yeah, I'm six, 10, 16 in March. What do your parents say? How do you feel about all of this? My mom's like, I guess she's pretty proud of me, I guess, but family isn't like too shocked, I guess, because like they saw me doing it for like ages from like and I wasn't giving up when it wasn't like really working out back for like six months before I found my first winner. And they knew what dropshipping was. Like, I think I said on the last case study, my mum knew what, has known what dropshipping is for like five years or something. She's an accountant. And um, so she knew what it was. So she knew it was like legit. And she knew like, cause I know some people, people's parents think it's like a scam or like something that doesn't work, but she like knew it was probably going to work if I didn't give up. Well, no, like you actually didn't give up at all. And like you, even though it took some time, you, you made it work. And I think like, by the way, we didn't even upload the the first case study so maybe like people watching yeah. this right now the problem we have is like we, we have ridiculous amounts of cases we literally have too many where we're not able to upload everything like i wanted to shift the channel a little bit in the direction where we only post like super high quality case studies like this one for example where we like actually like do a live filming session and all of that but the problem with that is not everybody's willing to reveal a current winner like most people are only willing to reveal like an old winner like it puts us on a delay on the case studies and and like it makes it a little bit tricky so like i would actually want to hear this like in the comments what you enjoy more if you think this is like way way better or if it's still worth uploading the regular case study styles which we had earlier but like we can do both it's just you know we we want to like up the quality as much as possible have you seen them like the other new ones like the yeah i saw the andy one that other the other 16 year old making like 300k that's like crazy i'm trying to get like that guy yeah no for sure it's insane how these fucking kids are just crushing it everywhere it's, it's so many do you think there's any factor in that do you think you have some sort of advantage well i think the biggest advantage we have is we don't have anything to, to lose because we're just in our parents house most kids and like if it doesn't work out we're just going to go back to living a normal life just going to school and then come home and then it's made for us and it's like it's nothing to lose but if you're like an adult and like you're by living by yourself in an apartment trying to working a job and then you're trying to do drop shipping it's like you have a lot to lose if nothing works out yeah no for sure for sure how many hours realistically were you putting in per day on a, on a regular basis when i found this one i was like really really uh working for it. like i was putting every single bit of my time in like after school before i found this one to like working up to it so i was like testing quite a few products at the uh, at the time and it had a lot of momentum and it really kicked off but so yeah it's probably like because i go to school of course so like on a school day i would just like come home just have a cup of coffee or something and then just start filming straight away film until dinner time have dinner and after dinner i'll edit all my videos and then just go to bed and like doing organic completely by yourself versus with us um except for like selecting the products what would you say were also the the main things you you felt different about well it's definitely your the minor questions like the and problems that you have you can just ask in the group chat and like you'll just get like a response and within like 24 hours just for any questions you have and um the suppliers i i was using aliexpress before this as well and with the the guns because i was using aliexpress for like a whole month well and i had like 10k in sales all fulfilled through aliexpress and i got like a ton of returns mm -hmm. and um but as soon as i got the supplier from you guys it uh, kind of sorted that out also, the um, the one on one calls that you do with the improve on the content that definitely is like the main thing. But personally, I didn't use it as much. I don't know why. I definitely could have used it a lot more, and I think I actually would be a lot further ahead if I did use them because I'm like the the type of person that just like I don't know what questions to ask. Like mm -hmm. like there's bit there's, there's heaps of things that I probably that did wrong like that I could have asked, but at the time I like didn't actually know um to ask the question and, uh, yeah i think the ability to ask questions is something which is pretty important in calls like some general advice for for how to ask the best questions to get the best responses is like a few things number one you have to make the goal very very clear so for example if you're testing products and somebody is checking your products they have to know your context to make it better for you so you say listen i already have three products which are semi-good so if you pick another product i will have to give up one of them 
them. This means that the, the, the one you pick has to be perfect. Like if it's just a decent one, I don't even want to bother testing it because I have another one, for example, that's a context, right? And then the person's going to look at the sheet much different than if he would think, okay, you're wasting your time anyways. Like he needs to select three or four products as an example, but that's number one. Number two is you just show something. And then when you don't understand the actionables of what to change, you keep asking. So for example, you show a video, why would you say this did not go viral? Well, this and this and this, or the person says, okay, this is actually a good video. Just keep posting this. Perfect. But you need to just constantly be showing everything you do every like 30, 40 videos you do. You just show one and ask, okay, what can I improve here? Like, where would you say is my weak point? What, what, what's the main thing? And if you keep asking these a little bit of a, like broader questions, which just lead to you improving in a lot of the cases, like me or the, the, the other coaches are going to look over it and they're going to see the actual issue. You know, you sometimes, if you ask like very specific things, you kind of have this confirmation bias of, okay, I think, I think this is the problem. Let me ask all my questions around this. But in reality, it might be something else. And it's so much better to ask questions where you just say, okay, what specific, what can I improve here? What's, what do you think is the issue? And then you keep asking, like, I keep digging in there, you know? So then like, that's how, like, I generally like to structure my questions when I ask people who are like above my level. Yeah, that's definitely uh, the way you want to be asking questions. Otherwise, if you just like ask, like, is this product good? Yeah, like, yeah it's not going to help you because they don't know your context, like you said. Exactly. Exactly. For you, what would you, what would you say were your main challenges like over the last year or so doing dropshipping? Definitely the product selection because I wasted like heaps of time testing just trash products. That and oh, also I want to say the Google Calendar is like the, has like been crazy for me i was doing them just writing down the goals i had to do on my notepad before obviously it's a lot different to actually having on the google calendar and because it's like you know exactly how much time each when you have to do the tasks and stuff it just it's definitely a, a productivity hack that a lot of a lot more people should use. Everyone who's not using the calendar is literally wasting their time. It's just ridiculous. If you're doing dropshipping right now, you don't know about the calendar structure. We we teach it in the program, but also like I have a few free tutorials on that on on YouTube. You just have to. You, you have to know how much time things take and you have to have a full day, which is just filled in with tasks. That's it's one of the most important things you can do. And it's probably like the highest ROI activity, like on the whole day is just filling in that calendar. What were your goals in the beginning and how did they change? My first goal like was just to make my first sale. And then I made the first sale. And then it's like make a thousand revenue in a month and you do that. And then it's like make 10,000 a month and you do that. And then my next goal was make a hundred thousand revenue. And I did that for well in my currency. And now my next goal is hundred thousand profit. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. those are just like the goals I didn't really. Did you start buying anything or you're just chilling with money? I just spend my money on like the products. The only thing I bought is the new phone, but that was for drop shipping kind of because I had the old, I had my old iPhone and it was a uh, just 64 gigabytes. And like every time I went to go film, it would just run out of storage and I had to delete. I ended up deleting like every single camera on my camera for like six years back just to get more storage for organic. But then I just had enough of that and decided to just buy the newest phone. And that's like the biggest purchase. There's no point in you spending any money right now. Wait it out a little bit, then you're going to have more than enough time later. But yeah. what would you tell like a complete beginner? What would you give like the main advice you, you would give them? I would say to just take action and not like waste your time on the stuff that doesn't matter in the moment. Like just find a product and then film videos for it and just do that heaps when you're a beginner because you just want to find that first winner when you're a beginner you don't really want to worry too much about the product just get good at making the content and um, once you get good at really good at making content then really focus on the product just start with the main task don't worry about your store or finding a, the perfect supplier or, and all that stuff when you're starting just just start no 100 percent. that's probably like 50 percent of everything just starting and actually doing it is literally like half the deal is already done yeah most people just never do it and never pull the trigger to actually do it properly and they never actually commit like if you start think about it if you if you actually start what it means 
is you have to do this until it works. And if you don't do think like that, then don't start because that's the only way how you're going to make it work. If you start half assing it and then just do it for a couple of months, not take it serious, and then basically stop after it doesn't work, there's no point in that at all. You're going to be better off not starting than actually starting. So if you decide to start, do it properly and have like a clear structure of everything and know what you're doing, that's it. The only contingency on dropshipping is do it until it works. That's it. You know, how was it for you in the beginning? Yeah. Well, in the beginning, I just did what I, what I just said, like I recommend to do. I, I, I was like using AliExpress as a supplier for like seven months. I didn't worry about finding the supplier. I didn't worry about any of this stuff. I saw the Mikey's video and then sort of learned about what organic was. And then I saw the case studies and then basically saw, okay, I can do this because it's like beginner friendly for like someone that for a teenager or something or whoever. And then I just instantly did some product research, ordered the product and then started filming with it. And um, yeah, and that's, that's what it was for me. Well, how would you describe generally like the structure of the program and how, how was it overall? Well, basically when you join the program, you're put into the group chat with the mentors and then basically you're um, showing like uh, through the, because you get the video courses as well and you like the video courses also solve a bunch of your problems that you already have like small things and you get an overview of like how to set up the accounts how to make content and all that but the main thing is really just the um the group chat because you can just ask any question and it's going to be answered exactly and the whole point of the program is basically three things number one is you have to actually get all the algorithm bullshit out of the way like if you were just shadow banned and nothing you do is working there's no point in doing it anyway so like we teach all the all the things you properly need to do how to how to set up the accounts like accounts the right way how to not get shadow banned the second thing is you post videos are they good are they bad and then constantly reviewing them and we have like the, the the group chat you were talking about which is like only you and the mentors no other students it's just like basically a group chat specifically dedicated for you and then on top of that you're going to have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one calls every day there's group calls and all these things the parts which people are struggling with like being sure if they're doing the right thing or not because the reality is if you post a video which is really good it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go viral it just means that it is a good video but sometimes you have to post a good video 10 times until it goes viral and a lot of people post it five times and think all right that was a trash video i have to change things up and then make it worse instead of just keep doing it and this is like a big big part of the program where we just look at it and tell you no no you're, you're doing good or yeah you actually have to change a bunch of things and the second thing is also with a product. So with a product, it's such a big time waste to test garbage products. Like if you test five bad products, it doesn't only cost you like a couple hundred dollars in ordering the product, it costs you months of your life and also the opportunity cost of you could have tested another product. And that is actually very expensive. So us just looking over the product sheets and telling you, okay, this product's good and this is bad is so, so much more valuable than everything you, you could do by yourself. It's just, that part and then also telling you when to drop a product i'm seeing people just drag out a product to infinity like basically they think all right i'm not a quitter i'm gonna keep going no matter what it does, doesn't work like that if if, you, if the product is saturated it's saturated you should quit on the product and do something else it's not real quitting it's just like being logical so we we need to actually assess if like when to kill a product what to do and also what product you should do at what level because a beginner should be having testing completely different products than an advanced person. And there's just so many different criteria, which we keep layering in later on, which are going to be super important for advanced people, but are literally a complete mistake to do as a beginner. If you overcomplicated you're never going to start and also you're not not never going to go viral you're not going to get any feedback like from instagram or tiktok those are the main things if you're interested you can click the link below sign up for a call and we see if it's a good fit and um yeah bro i'm, I'm gonna definitely do a, have an update case study with you uh, when you mm -hmm. hit the 100k profit in the bank and yep. uh, yeah looking forward to that